Um, so can we start with you just introducing yourself, please? Yeah. My name is Nick Mendetta, X Roll Fusiliers 23623981, regimental number. I arrived at the town on the 21st of May 1959 to do two years national service. Um, which was hard going, but at the time I was quite fit to most of the guys that come in, which were teddy boys, a lot of them, and they abused themselves by drinking and smoking. Well, I was always been a keen sportsman, so I was reasonably fit. I thought I was fit until I got here. <laughs> and then uh, they get you fit, and it was real fun. I mean, I loved getting fit. When you're really super fit, there's nothing you can't do. Um, I originally came from Bermondsey, and because when I received my papers to join the Royal Fusiliers, the only people I knew were the guards. And I thought, me being five foot one and a half, they want me for a mess cap. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I soon got put right by the corps and sergeants here. It was great fun. Yeah. So, um, when you were called up, were you like excited to? Join well, or? I think most young lads of the fifties knew that they had to do their yeah. national service if you were physically fit. Very few exceptions. Um, I was always fit, and. I knew I was going to have to do it, so I made sure I was quite fit, and it wasn't a big shock. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, um, it was a big eye-opener, because I, I'd already been deferred two years being an apprentice. I was a French polisher by trade, antique restoration, all land work. And I should have come in in the end of 56, 57. But I arrived in '59. Um, yeah, it it was. I never regret it, and I think it's what mis what is missing today. With a lot of youngsters, aren't given the opportunity for all walks of life, for men and women, and men and women, they want to go into service. I think it's a, it is a shame because you do get to communicate. I mean, we had two merchant banker sons uh, in our intake. And it is a big eye opener. But you all have to knuckle down because you can't have, if you're in a section which is basically seven to nine men, depending on wartime or peacetime, um, you all have to get on. And if one of you steps out of line, the others make sure that you don't do it again because you get all the privileges taken away you can either go home Friday night on leave or if you put step out of line you don't go home to Saturday midday and if you've got to travel up country and catch trains you haven't got much time at home with mum and dad and your cousins and brothers and people but yeah it was I enjoyed it I loved army life and I, I carried on after doing the National Service. But, uh, yeah, it was great. I finished my apprenticeship, uh, where I got decent money. Um, it was about seven and a half quid a week. But then, I finished my apprenticeship in the April, and I joined the regiment in May. I was back to 28 shillings a week which equates to 20 pence a day. You know, it's a big, uh, big difference, a bit of a shock. And out of that, you get stoppages. If you drop a mug, it costs you a shilling. If you break windows in the barrack rooms, not just you, but everyone in that barrack room gets stoppages. And when you're only getting 28 shillings a week, there's hardly stoppages and they take bits out you finish up with about 12 and 6 a week. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it was good. Yeah. Right. So, um, when you were doing basic training, like, did you find it quite hard with the physically, quite physically demanding? Um, 
No, the physical side of it, I could always run, even from a young lad of seven or eight. Um, I could always run, and I was quite fit. Even though I'm small, uh, I was very compact. And some of the bigger guys did find it very awkward. Because when you, um, you go and have a medical, when we was going off to Malta, I think we had something like about eight or nine injections for different, different um, depending where you were going in the world. Uh, I've seen big guys of six foot two in front of me, see the needle and go bang straight down on their face. You know, but uh, no, I mean, you get to take it in your stride. You, you, you know, no one likes injections. <laughs> but, uh, it was a thing that you got on with. Yeah. Kind of interesting, but uh, the phys physical side was, was no problem. They always used to pick on me that when we was in training down at Purfleet, there was a young rigor soldier who was about three or four inches taller than me. And one of the things you have to do in training if you're doing a circuit is get over a six foot wall with full pack and a rifle. Well, the idea is to run at the wall, jump up and wrap your arms over and roll over. And this guy couldn't look, do it for the love of no money. And the son said, Hey, Mendetta, get over that wall. Because I just ran up, bang, straight. He said, If that little, what's his name, can get over it, you should be out. Edel was this guy's name, a regular soldier. I didn't see him after that. He was back squatted so many times. That we didn't see him for, you know, I never saw him again. But yeah, in, it was interesting when you're going through tunnels, three quarters submerged with water, and you've got full pack on. You're nice and dry when you're going, but when you come out the other end, you probably weigh another 30 or 40 pounds heavier. And that can be a struggle, you've still got three and a half miles to go. Yeah, but uh, it was interesting. So, um, what was a typical day of training like? Uh, training, you would be up at half six. Uh, quick wash ablutions, as they called it. A quick wash, shave, get ready, down, breakfast. Then you'd be back, and depending on what they wanted you to do that day, because you never knew in advance, all your webbing, it was the old 1937 webbing. Uh, had to be blankoed. You'd done that the night before. All the brass is polished. And, uh, yes, it, it was interesting that um, then you would, you might go, if it was in the tower, it was square bashing, bullying, polishing boots, polishing brasses. They used to give you, you'd be in full FSMO, full service marching order. Uh, that means all best battle dress on, best boots polished up. You'd be down, marching up and down on the square outside. And they'd bring you back in front of the square. Right, you've got two minutes to get upstairs, change into PT kit. Remembering that you didn't know, well, you, you had a rough idea, so you took off all your webbing hung it up over the bed on the two extended poles so it was all ready for you to slip your arms in to save three seconds um, and me being up on the top floor or I think there was about 22 of us in that top floor room so it was a fight to scramble up the stairs you're slipping remember you've got these old fashioned ammunition boots with all the studs in which when you're, you've got 20 old guys or 40 guys getting up there they're all trying to push each other <laughs> to get up the top to get in there quick. You had to be careful once you got in your room because it was wooden floored and polished so high that you got up to the top, quickly unlaced your boots and walked across in your um, socks so you didn't damage the floor. All your kit off, PT kit on, back downstairs. I remember the last man downstairs had to do 20 press-ups. Of course, all your mates were all looking at you, and that sniggering and laughing, 
you feel about as big as that. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it was different. Once we went to Purfleet, that was a battle training area uh, where you learnt field craft, rifle shooting, and force marches. And until you've actually been on a force march, they start you off nice and gentle. Because now, once you've been in about four or five weeks, you're getting a bit fitter. And say, so, right, a nice gentle little march, five mile bash, FSMO, full service marching order, and off you go. And they gradually speed you up. Instead of left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, and they, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And you're going and the front of your shins feel as if someone's kicking you in the shins. The pain is that bad. And then you work your way up from five, seven, nine miles up to 15 mile bash. And you was always told every I think it used to be, if it, it depending on the sergeant or the corporal who had you flying along. Um, when he called a break, because the idea is to lay down and put your feet up above your head. So being in the country, our feet were permanently up grass edges and we were half laying in the road sort of thing, panting for breath and trying to grab a fag. <laughs> It seems funny, I mean, but everyone had to do it, you know, but, uh, yeah, and then you would be back at tea, do a session in the afternoon, um, at tea, um, then, because when we was in Purfleet, they had the old army round stoves, and they had to be blackened with boot black. And the surround, the brick surround, had to be whitewashed. But the only way you could do that is send, send two of your lads down with a bucket to fill it up with a chalk from the quarry, which was half a mile away. So they would come back, you would soak that to make a nice one and polish it all. And then you had to put the brooms, that you had two brooms in each billet room, that you had to cross Everything was regimented to get it drummed into you. This is the way you do things, army style. And it was a great, you know, everything you've done, you laid your kit out. You had three PT vests, red, white, and blue. Blue sh shorts, but when you get issued with them, they fit someone three times your size. You know, and you do look carrot. I mean, it's all right if you're a big fella, they look too bad, but a little fella like me, you've got to make it down your knees, you don't look very pretty, I tell you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. You know, but, uh, I've never regretted it. Uh, and I think it's a great thing that would be good for a lot of youngsters today. I think this is where, once they stop national service, I think that a lot of the problems start to happen and develop. You know, but, uh, you know it's, uh, 12 weeks training here and at Perfleet, and then you get, where are we going? Where are we going to finish up? Didn't know. And then it's all right, you're going on three weeks this end or embarkation leave back at the tower on a certain date. And then you found out where he was going. And I'd rock my hands together. I didn't want to go to the Far East. I, d I don't like creepy, crawly beetles and snakes and things like that. Malta. I was in Malta for 19 months and it was one of the best postings you could get. But there again, uh, it was very hot. I mean, in the summer it could quite easily go up to 100. And you're in the old battle dress, the itchy one, as they called it. And a lot of guys got khaki rash. And you see them scratching each other. You just can do it, the MO given cream and that, but it never works. But you got used to it after a while. 